you know. And then we deal with time. He said, because of set time. Timing is everything. Yes, is. You know, we can sometimes go before our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can move too slow and be out of our time. Yes. And we can miss God. But he says the set time. Meaning that, you know what, it's perfect now. You know, it's no, you ain't thinking about it. It ain't what you thought he was doing. You know. And he knew exactly. I have your heart now. Mm -hmm. That's why he says it's a set time to favor you now. Because I know you've been through some things. You know, Job said, you know the way that I take. Mm -hmm. All right. But after you have tried me, mm -hmm. then I shall come forth. Yes. As pure gold. After you have been after. tried. So he knew after we had been tried. And while we were being tried, what we was going through, that's why it took 70 years. We just didn't take our whooping. You know, your mom used to whoop your butt. And you made it longer. That's in the spirit. Because you made it longer because you bucking, hollering, and running. And she, I'm going to get you. And she running behind. Uh -huh. And when you thought and you were running, and now you made the worst. Bad. So the and the whooping was long. Here. That's right. Uh -huh. Right. We running from God, we make them whoop them whooping long. Come on, Jesus. You know, we uh uh Lord whoop my butt and get it over with. Mm -hmm. You know, ah, oh, let me take it. But I don't want to stay in this thing no 70 years. Yes, but he knew whatever it took to get out of them what he wanted to put in them. Yes. It had to be. So we praise God for that. Yeah. When there's a set time and, and you know your season. And one thing God, a pastor had a pastor to say, and I mean, we was in church not too long ago, and he said this, and it really blessed me. It just, I mean, that's why I put it here. It says, know your time or your season. Ask God for wisdom and understanding through prayer. What I'm going through and what I've been through, is this or is it for a reason or is it for a season? And be honest with yourself. Because a lot of things we're going through is for a reason. Some things is for a season. Some is both. It's for a reason and a season. But when you know what you're going through, what God is getting out of you, you know it's going to pass. But if you're doing things to walk contrary to God's word and to disobey God, you're just prolonging the process. And when he said that, I said, wow. And I got to thinking about my situation. I said, Lord, this is for a season. When you say it's for a season, that means, you know, it ain't so bad. But when you say, Lord, this is for a reason, so that means some things you caused. That's right. And I had to say, well, that's not really honest. i got to be honest with you. It's for a reason <laughs> and a season. So therefore, I have to endure yes. the hardship. Yes. And I have to go through and I have to run this race that God has set before me. Yes. And I cannot weary and well do and I can give up. But I have to stand still and know that he's God in all of this. Amen. Amen. And that just really blessed me. And that's one thing about it. When our time it has come, and, and, and we know it talks about in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and place for everything. Yes. And it says here, it says Ecclesiastes 9, 11 through 12, it says, Wait and stay in the will of God, nor your time and favor is at hand. That means that you get to a place that you can't miscarry the blessings of God. You know what God is doing in your life. The time is right there. Yes. And that's the time when you eliminate all your options. It ain't an A and a B. Which way do I go? You follow what God says follow. And see, a lot of times that delay our time is when our options come in. We have too many options. Mm -hmm. But, oh that but is some ain't it. Pastor was ministering on last week. And he had said, but... And now you got that butt in my face again. Mm. And people was like, ooh, he said, oh, come on now. Let's not get so sanctimonious and spiritual. Anytime you put but God, that means you're putting that butt in his face. Mm. You have to eliminate the butt and say, okay, Lord, that's what you say? Mm. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. And every time we put but in it, that means we're bringing on options. Okay, but if it ain't this, Maybe it's this. Mm -hmm. But if it ain't to the left, it's to the right. But if it ain't in the system, mm -hmm. it may be in the brother. So that but brings on options. And God said, there's no options. Mm -hmm. What I have set you in, the time I have set you in, there's no more options. It's either my way or no way. And that's the place where we're in now, mm -hmm. that we have to do it God's way. 
And in three, Ecclesiastes 3 and 2, this really blessed me as well. It says there's a time for everything. And it talks about a natural birth. But the Lord gave me the flip side that that's not only a natural birth, but there's a time for a spiritual birth. For in John 3 and 3, it says, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. So you have to be born again to be in him. So it's just not about your mother naturally birthing forth you. But once you have tasted and known of God, you got to say, you know what, Lord? I receive you. Yeah. And a lot of times, but we talked about it first, we have not received the fullness of God. We have received what Martha said about God. Mm -hmm. And we have received what others said about God. Mm -hmm. But we have not learned God for our own in a real way. Mm -hmm. And that's the place that I had to get to. But Lord, it's good what you're doing for my sisters. It's really good what I see God is doing in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, it is good what I see what he's doing for pastor. But Lord, what about me? I need to see you. I need you to do something for me. And that's where you grow from when God started. You start asking God, you know what, Lord? Why are your favors on those people? Boy, Lord, you just really set them up. That everything, how we perceive perception will mess you up. Perception will mess you up. Because you just don't know what it took for them to get where they are. All, right. All you see is just, woohoo, yeah. glory, yeah. hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it took the glory and the hallelujahs to keep going forward. Pain. In the midst of the pain mm -hmm. and the sufferings that they went through and what they're going through. Yeah. So you got to get to a place and say, Lord, you know what? I need you to do it for me. Yeah. The anointing that I saw, yeah. the manifestation of your spirit yeah. that I experienced amongst my sisters. Mm -hmm. When they go, when they're not, when I'm by myself, when there's not a song played, when no one is laying their hands on me, when no one is praying over my life and I audibly hear them praying over my life. Okay, Lord, where you at? So when we are born in Him, that's when He reestablished that relationship with us. Yes. It's a door that's open for us. So we need to be born not only of the natural, which we are, but we need to let our brothers and sisters know we need to be born of the Spirit. I mean, it takes us to a whole other level of being filled with the Spirit. We need to be liberated. And Isaiah 60, it says, Rise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. You know, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, Oh, ye everlasting door. And the king of glory is only until you lift up your head that you're able to see the king of glory. You're able to see him in his strongness and his mightness and, his, and everything that you need. It's only until you lift up your head. Yeah. And lifting up your head is mean that you just, I mean, you, you ain't seeing nobody but him. And that's the time that God has set for us a favor that we get to a place that everything that's going on around us, we got to stay so focused. In this hour, that we're seeing nobody but God. All right. Yes. Because guess what? If we if we just eyeball it, it's like put the blinders on. Whatever it takes, put your spiritual blindfolds on. That's me when you spiritually thank you, Jesus. When you spiritually and you somebody blindfolds you, you they they they're leading you, they're guiding you through. And you don't know where they're taking you. Remember we used to play that game, we blindfold ourselves, and we trust in them, that they're going to lead us to the right way. But spiritually, that's what God wants. Put the blinders on and let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me carry you through. You know, I'm the one that's able to keep you from falling. The footsteps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. And though you may be pushed aside or cast aside, he said, I'm the one that's going to uphold you. Wherever you lead, I follow. So that's what we have to do is put on a spiritual blindfold and say, okay, Lord, okay, Lord. guide me. You set me up for this time. Mm -hmm. So right. you need to guide me. Mm -hmm. Jesus. So that means, God. you know what? I need your direction. Yes. So that means like you're my navigation system. Mm -hmm. I can't depend on that car to be my navigation system in the spirit. Because it may lead me somewhere I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. But when God's your spiritual navigation system, that means you set your face to God. And you look for direction. You know, you, you, you look to hear from God. So you can walk in the right path of righteousness. You know, you don't have to gear off. 
You know, boop, boop, boop. there's some roads in the bump when you gear off. Come on now. When you try to get back on, you can overturn and you can destroy yourself and kill yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you